So for tutorial number one in this beginner series, let's first address the questions, what is max MSP? Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about its history. And what is the difference between max, MSP, and jitter? So to answer these questions, I have some websites and we're gonna walk through the Wikipedia a little bit. So Max is a visual programming language for music and multimedia. What does that mean, visual programming language? Well, uh, according to Wikipedia, uh, visual programming language is any programming language that lets users create programs by manipulating program elements graphically rather than by specifying them textually. So what does that mean? What that means is that normally when you're programming things, it looks like this. You have lines of code and you know you write one line of code and you follow it by another you you maybe you know you have these little tags in, in HTML where you want the A tag inside the P tag, things like that. Well, with Maximus P, you are not dealing with text like this. Um, it you know this reads linearly, the computer goes straight down. With Max MSP, you have it looking more like this where you have these visual blocks, these visual elements, uh, and they're called objects. And you connect one object to another object through their outlet and their inlet. So that's what it means by visual programming language. It's not using text, strings of text. You're using these actual elements. Uh, it is developed and maintained by San Francisco-based software company Cycling74. So Maximus P isn't the name of the company, Cycling74 is the name of the company. And if you go to cycling74.com, you could find their sleek little website. Uh, you could download a 30-day free trial of Max MSP where it gives you full access to it. You know, you can save, you can make patches. Uh, so that's nice, they don't restrict you with your 30-day free, free demo. Um, connect it to Max. No matter what you have on your table, you could probably make it talk to Max. That is not a bluff. Uh, so you could get Arduino to talk to Max and Max to talk to Arduino. You could have MIDI controllers controlled by Max and likewise. Uh, synthesizers, lighting setups, projectors, live inputs such as a guitar or microphone. You could run signal into Max MSP and manipulate it and you could also have it the other way around. You could have signal uh, manipulating Max and you could have Max manipulating the signal. So this website is really cool though because it has this community section where people post projects that they have created using Max MSP. So you can go through and get some inspiration. Uh, sometimes the people even allow you to download the patch that they, they created. Um, so this is very cool. They also have a tools section that uh, and so on. So Max MSP allows you to manipulate um, numbers, it also allows you to manipulate audio, and also allows you to man manipulate video. But one of their new things as well is that you can build plugins for Ableton Live using Max MSP. So we'll get to that in a little bit though. During its 20 year history, it has been used by composers, performers, software designers, researchers, and artists for creating recordings, performances, and installations. So since Max allows for so many different ways to manipulate data, it can be used by anyone, honestly. I mean, if you think of yourself as an artist, you can use it. If you think of yourself as a, as a programmer, you know, more on the technical side, um, you, can, you can find uses of it. So it's just a data manipulation tool. So uh, however you want to manipulate data in an interactive way, you can find a way to do it in Max. An API, allows third-party development of new routines called external objects. As a result, Max has a large user base of programmers not affiliated with Cycling74 who enhance the software with commercial and non-commercial extensions to the program. So what this means is that Cycling74 aren't the only people creating objects. What is an object? An object essentially does a thing. It either creates data and information or it manipulates data or information. Um, so Cycling74 isn't the only uh, developer for this program. There are a lot of third-party people. So one example of some external objects that are very popular is called CV.JIT, Computer Vision for Jitter. So you can download this collection of objects for free and then get it hooked up to Max's library so that now when I create an object, if I go CV, 
all of these cv.jit objects I can you know use as a standard Maximus P object. So these weren't created by Cycling74, but you can use them in here. And you know this thing, uh, let's see, we have jit.freenet.grab, so you can get connect information hooked up to Maximus P. Uh, there's another cv.jit object that tracks eye motion, so it'll specifically lock onto your eyes and see where you're looking. So that's a really cool, you know, another reason why Max literally can do just about anything because if it can't do something, someone can create an object that will allow it to do that thing. So let's look through the history a little bit. Miller Puckett, uh, he, he's French, so I'm sure it's probably not pronounced Puckett, but I'm just going to be American about it for the rest of this video and say Miller Puckett originally wrote Max at IRCAM. IRCAM is... Institute for Research and Coordination Acoustic. So it's a French inst institute for science about music and sound and avant-garde electroacoustical art music. Perfect place for Max to be born. So he developed Max as a way to talk to things like MIDI controllers in a way that's a lot more intricate and sophisticated and allows for a lot more programming freedom than the things that currently existed. So it was a way to deal with numbers, and MIDI data uh, for a long time. Then he released uh, an entirely redesigned free software computer program in 1996 called PD, short for Pure Data, which despite a number of fundamental differences from the EarCam original, is superficially very similar and remains an open source alternative to Max MSP. So if you ever hear about Pure Data, uh, it Event, it's essentially a offspring of what eventually became Maximus P, and it's completely free since it's open source. Um, yeah, and it's still deal, dealing with data. It's dealing with numbers and MIDI control or amounts and stuff like that. So, so this is still called Max back at the time. It's not called Max MSP. Then. Max has a number of extensions and incarnations. Most notably, a set of audio extensions to the software appeared in 1997, derived in part from Puckett's subsequent, subsequent work in Pure Data. So audio extensions. Uh, called MSP, short for either Max Signal Processing or the initials of Miller S. Puckett, this add-on package for Max allowed for the manipulation of digital audio signals in real time allowing users to create their own synthesizers and effects processors. Max had previously been designed to interface with hardware synthesizers, samplers, etc. as a control language using MIDI or some other protocol. So how come it took over a, a, about a decade for Max to grow into Max MSP where it had audio signal processing capabilities? Why do you think that is, that it, it took a, a whole decade for that to happen? Well, the answer is because of computer processing power. When you're processing a signal, you are processing uh, at least 44,000 packets of information per second. That's the standard sampling rate for a, a CD um, or an audio CD. So you're, you could just start at that baseline and think that for every second that you have an audio signal running, you have 44,000 plus packets of information. So here, I'll show you a little bit of Max. Meanwhile, if you're dealing with Max, you are dealing with really smaller, a lot smaller than 44,000 packets of information per second. So here I have this program, uh, this little patcher, this collection of objects made uh, using Max objects. So you see that they are Max objects because they have this gray patch cord. If you have gray patch cords, that means that it is uh, dealing with data and numbers, small numbers. Um, well, not necessarily small numbers, but, but not constant streams of numbers. So I have this little patcher where when I press it, it is, you know, hooking up to the MIDI uh, of our, the sound card here, the little MIDI computer, or MIDI piano, and it just picks a random key to press. So every time I press this button, it is sending maybe, you know, let's just say a dozen packets of information, you know, once. Once I press the button, it's like, okay, maybe 12 packets of information, 12 packets of information. Meanwhile, if you get to MSP, 
Here, this is, cycle is a sine wave. So let's get it to do a sine wave. So now we're doing a sine wave. This sine wave is sending at least 44,000 packets of information per second. So, and then we also have a sawtooth wave. And then some pink noise. So, it, as you can see, as opposed to it just sending a packet of information every time I press a button, it is sending this stream of data constantly. So you can tell this is an MS, these are MSP objects by looking at the tilde. Anytime there's a tilde after the name, uh, that means it is MSP, that it's processing a signal, which I'm assuming it did a tilde because it kind of looks like a little sine wave. But so you can see, we have a difference here. This is a max object, it's called a radio group, and it's just four buttons. And when you do one button, it sends out a zero. You do another button, it sends out a one. It sends out a two. That's how much information is being outputted. Zero, one, two, three. Meanwhile, these MSP objects are outputting 44,000 plus packets of information per second. So it's processing a lot of information. So that's why it took so long for Max to grow to have signal processing. But then now you can create synthesizers and such. So it's really cool. In the meantime, Cycling74 developed their own set of video extensions. They released a major package for Max MSP called Jitter in 2003, which provides real-time video, 3D, and matrix processing capabilities. So it took uh, six more years until they allowed they had the capabilities to process video. Um, now, as we were talking how this takes so much packets of information to process, same with video. So a matrix, a matrix is essentially a grid of information packets. So you think of a webcam, each pixel has a red value, a green value, and a blue value. So let's say that, let's just say that you had a nine or a three by three matrix right here. Well then you have a red value for this, a green value for this, and a, uh, a blue value for this. For just the red, there are nine packets of information. For just the green, you have another nine, so all of a sudden it's 18 packets of information. Then you have the blue, so all of a sudden, now that's 27 packets of information. Now, if you think about it, if we have a, a 1280 by 720 grid of information, so there's what, 900,000 packets of information per color. So let's say that's just red. Now we need to times it by three because it's that grid for the red values, and then it's that grid for the blue values, and it's that grid for the green values. So now all of a sudden we have two million, uh, almost closer to three million packets of information per one frame of video. So now, since it takes about 24 frames per second for us to see persistence of vision, let's times that by 24. So suddenly we are at, what, uh, 66 million packets of information per second when it comes to video processing. So just like how MSP took a lot of processing power, when you're dealing with video, you're also dealing with a lot of data. So how do we know we're dealing with jitter objects? we have JIT dot and then the object. So right now, this Metro is a max object. It sends a bang. And then we have this JIT dot QT dot grab, which, oh, there's a frozen picture of me. This is the webcam uh, object, which we used in tutorial zero. So you'll see that it has a green patch cord here. Just like MSP has a yellow patch cord, Jitter uses green patch cords to show that it's sending a matrix of pixel values, essentially. So this is one thing that Jitter does is it's, you know, right now I have Jitter, uh, this is refreshing the video frame th every 30 milliseconds. So just think about that, however many milliseconds go into a second. That's how much information is being processed uh, every second. So. That's one thing that Jitter allows for is uh, to show frames of video. Another thing though is it allows for OpenGL, which is, what is OpenGL? OpenGL is Open Graphics Library, is a cross-language multi-platform application program interface 
for rendering 2D and 3D vector graphics. So uh, it's typically used to interact with a graphics processing unit, GPU, to achieve hardware accelerated rendering. So you are rendering uh, images in your graphics in 2D and 3D. So as an example of this, I'm using the, uh, I got an example of the JIT.GL for, uh, you know, OpenGL, Play-Doh object. And if we get this open, you can see right here, we have a object rendered in a 3D environment. I get to click on it and I can drag it around and I can spin it, throw it and have some fun with it. So Max, uh, so Jitter is, <laughs> there's my frozen face, Jitter uh, it is not only a way to run video, but it also is a way to use OpenGL to render 2D and 3D frames, or yeah, graphics. So I hope that clears up some confusion about the difference between Max, MSP, and Jitter. And I uh, look forward to talking to you in the next video.